Hi and welcome to another video and today I'm going to be tearing down the MZ-1 from Rocket Jump Ninja and Extra Fire collaboration. So I'm going to take apart every single bit of this mouse, we're going to weigh each piece so you can do some weight modifications which I've already done to get down to 50 grams. But today we're just going to see how it's made, how everything's constructed and what components they've used for this mouse. If you're not familiar with this channel I'll give you the competitive edge over your gaming rivals, I'll provide you with all the information you need to get things like which is the lowest latency mouse, which has the fastest click, things like that in different reviews as well as other videos dedicated to those topics. I'll be putting out a review for the Rocket Jump Ninja mouse. I'll also be doing a full weight reduction, which will go down to 50 grams, 46 grams if you don't like the side buttons and a stream that I did and I'll be doing an edited version and putting that on YouTube very shortly to keep your eyes out for that as well. The stock weight came in at around 60 to 61 grams. You've got screw and each skate. I've used lighter fluid here to take the skates off. I've done a video on that as well if you want to see it. There's also, the skates also come in at 0.9 millimeters, which is slightly thick, normally around 0 0.7, 0 0.8, 0 0.9, certainly getting a little bit thicker. But it'd be interesting to see if there's any LOD issues here on the 3389 sensor, although you can adjust the LOD on this mouse. You've got four screws under each pad, which is a bit annoying. So it means you're gonna have to take off all the skates to take the mouse apart. But they have added a little notch in the gate area for you to be able to get a tool under there very easily. I use this splinge drill. The links to my tools are in my description as well. The skates in total weigh just under a gram, which is nice. Once you get all the four screws out of each corner, you can then just pull it apart. There's no, there's a few clips on the side, but there's no clips on the front like some mice. You can see here what it looks like inside. So you see on the PCB here, we've got the KL8 switches. We've got Hawano yellow dot black shells for the DPI. We're using an F switch encoder. And you can see the LED light strips on the side here as well. You'll see the RGB PCB in the scroll wheel, which is what you see in the model low. And then you've got three, well, technically four screws in the PCB, what including the LED one for the scroll wheel. What was interesting to see is these screws here are cut, they're very short threaded. They seem to have cut these from stock screws. I guess they're trying not to penetrate too far into the shell. You just pull off the RGB light in here. It's on a pin connection that easy to take off if you want. Cable's got the usual JFT connection. It's got two little clips on the side of it like Zara use. A little bit annoying to get off normally these, and this one is no exception. They've also got this electrical piece on the power cord. I think it's an EU regulation. I can never remember what it's called. What's interesting to see is the cable thickness is certainly thicker than I would expect. It's not as flexible, this cable. If I compare it against the Model O cable, the Ascend cable, you can see it's at the bottom here. It's got thinner gauged cable. Gives it a bit more flex. I did find this cable to be a little bit inflexible, a bit like the Razer Speed Flex cable. I don't find these very flexible either. Cable weighs 40 grams just under, which is shows you how thick the cable is. Normally they're around 20 views of power cord. And you've got the DPI switch as well as the toggle switch on the bottom for LOD and things like that. So let's weigh the stickers because we're going to every little piece of the mouse here to weigh it. And you can see these stickers are not even registering. Every little micro gram counts. Especially if you're watching my channel, you'll get used to that. When we weigh all these together, though, there is 0.07 of a gram, but there's probably some tolerances on the scale here. So there's also a little diffuser on the DPI switch. And then you've also got the DPI switch itself. You've got the base coming at 9.5 grams, which is nice and light. And then this is what the PCB looks like. I did find it a bit dirty, the PCB. You can see a lot of fingerprints. There's probably some of the flux, which is unusual for ones that come out the shop themselves, straight off the retail shelf. You might see that on some that have modded like myself, because I mod a lot of mice. I'll put a link in the description to the ones that I do, but you wouldn't expect that from a retail product. The scroll wheel was surprisingly heavy here at three grams, and I'm also not a fan of the split rubber. This is what the scroll wheel looks like. You won't be able to change the rubber very easily here for a silicon ring because of this split style. I think it's a bit of a compromise to be fair. You've 
also got the 7mm F-switch encoder. I did think this was originally a Kale, but it's not. It's a F-switch encoder. I do like the green micro switch, though. Definitely want some of those. So a nicely optimized PCB here. It's a shame they've got the LED strips on it. Again, compromising for RGB. Certainly weighing quite a bit, at just over 11 grams. Again, you can see how well it's optimized, but again, you can see how dirty it is. What is interesting is the clips the main feet off the main switches, the little pegs. I don't know why they've done that. They haven't done it on the other switches. It's a bit of a, a weird thing to do. I don't think it's for the profile of the PCB to the base either. We did check that. Could be missing something there, though, but it's an unusual way to do it. You can also see the RGB is longer on one side than the other, so it might trigger people. You can see that in the mouse itself. PCB measurements here, if you want to swap them out, maybe you want to put a G305 base in there. A few people have asked me that. It's nice to see it's at 0.8 millimeters thick. You've got two screws for the side switches. I don't expect anything revolutionary here. You've got a connector with a JS2 connector as well for it, and you can see this kind of bridge plate to stop the flex on the mouse here. I do like this. This stops it from flexing on the sides. Good luck design. You've got Hawano yellow dot black shell again for the side switches. It would have been nice to see Kale eights as well on the sides on the DPI. I feel like mice companies cheap out a bit when they don't do that. Not that Hawano yellows are bad, but they are a cheaper switch with a less lifespan. There's a clip holding the DPI in a bit similar to other mice, like the Ultralight 2. You've got to be careful you don't push these too wide and snap them. Then we've got how the side buttons are mounted. They're mounted like the Ultralight 2 and Final Mouse. I'm not a fan of this. It's very fragile and they do tend to snap. It's almost like a split pin or split peg. And this can snap. So it'll be interesting to see how long this lasts, whether there's any issues in terms of build quality for these side buttons. Overall, the side buttons are nice though. They've tried to take out as much weight as they can here as well. Again, looking at that bridge a little bit closer, you can see some clips for the main buttons. A translucent design I like. What I'm not too keen about is how they've got the black pieces here at the front of the mouse. Again, making it front heavy. This is what people are complaining about. And you can see why in this teardown. And you can see they've got this original front piece. This is the Rocket Jump Ninja logo. I think it's a bit of a waste, to be fair. I don't see why you'd want that. Same with the extra fire on the back of the PCB. I know people want branding, but when you try and make a lightweight mouse, I think some of this stuff compromises it. You know whose mouse it is. Simple design for the rear panel, you've got a clip at the bottom of it and a clip on the front over where the DPI goes, easy to remove. You've also got the screw mount points as well that we took out before. What I do like about this is the way the flat parts are for your fingers, where they rest. They've definitely thought about that. Rocket Jump Ninja's thought about where your fingers are going to be. It doesn't really bother me that they're over holes, but it's nice to see that. I also like the curves and the switches, which I'll go into in my review. Now you can see the RGB diffusers here. So taking a look at the main buttons, simple design. Stops a little bit of flex, again, a bit like a Model O, but these don't seem to have much bubble, which is good. You can then see the diffusers on these black plates with the screws again, unnecessary weight. What it's triggering is the right-hand side is longer than the left-hand side. 
I know that's because of the side buttons, but it's a little bit annoying. Again, they've used these half drop screws again. And one of these was a little bit tricky to get out. It's not the best. You can see I have to use some tweezers in a minute because the thread's very, very short on them. For me, I don't particularly like this design. It wouldn't have been something that I would have decided on. Again, you can see I'm using the tweezers to get the screw out. That's because it won't thread stripped right off the bat. Not great. Not necessarily going to cause you a problem, but still, I don't think it's the best. If you already go and follow me on Twitch, I'm doing some other ones for the Razer Orochi very soon as well. There's going to be a stream on Wednesday, the 26th. So hopefully I get this video out before then. And we'll be taking it apart and doing some modifications to that as well. So you've got one extra long piece of black plastic. Not really sure what it's for. Maybe to strengthen it, stop it flexible. This thing's pretty rigid anyway. Again, unnecessarily for me. Maybe someone can enlighten us like Good Jump Ninja or Extra Five why that piece is there. And this is the Rocket Jump Ninja logo. We know why that's there because we want to show his branding. So here's the shell fully torn down. This is what it looks like. This is what it weighs. Nice optimization here on the weight reduction for this. You can see they stripped out a lot of the weight. And this is how the Rocky Jump Ninja Extrify MZ1 is laid out. This is it fully taken apart. You need to repair it. You need to weight reduction it. You just want to see what it looks like anyway and how it's built. Here it is. So hope you've enjoyed this video. Don't forget to check out the ones that are coming out. Don't forget to like and subscribe so you don't miss the next ones. Worth checking out some of my other mice. I've done a great one for Noted. I modified a Ultralight 2 for him and made it wireless. And I also made a 49 gram G Pro Superlight wireless for latency with some customized scroll wheel, which is pretty nice. Definitely worth checking out. I'll put some links in the description. And I'll catch you on the next video. See you again. Bye-bye.